Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're one of my regular visitors here. And if this is your first visit, a very big welcome to you. I hope you like my style of astrology. I try to make it simple and understandable for everyone. And I would, of course, love it if you'd subscribe. So today we are going to look at the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus on the 28th of October. And just as I've started this video, my pussycats have decided to run around the room and have a game. So if you hear noises off, that's what it is. Right, let's get back to the full moon partial lunar eclipse in Taurus on the 28th of October. So what do we know about this? Well, it's quite interesting if we look at the event chart because we have a kind of group of planets and at this point it would be a good idea, wouldn't it, for the chart to appear magically up here, thank you Jerry, as if by magic, technical magic. So if you look at the 11th house, we have a group of planets, dwarf planets, space objects, and of course the North Node. You cannot have an eclipse unless one of the nodes is present. So the most significant part of the 11th house is the fact that the moon that is full and is being eclipsed by planet Earth is conjunct retrograde Jupiter in Taurus. And they are obviously opposite the sun in Scorpio and it's five degrees. And if you do know your chart, and I know some of you leave me comments asking for the degrees and some of you say ah i don't understand when you say a degree point so i try to cater for everyone so this is for the people that know their degree point because it is super helpful and don't forget on my website at the moment pennydicks.com you can buy and download a beginner's guide to understanding your natal chart. And it's it's just in very simple terms and it just gives you pretty basic information, but it might help. There's also four short videos in there, which I've done, which kind of help to explain certain things that you need to know. So all you have to do is go to my website, go to the shop, you pay online on a, 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 a link that's called Stripe, which is new to me, and soon I hope I'll be doing clients via that way. But anyway, download that. There's also a moon calendar that you might like to, to, to buy and download and have it on a t-shirt, on the wall, laminate it, back to the astrology, because that's what you're here for. And so in Scorpio opposite, we have, and it's interesting in this chart, and you know me, I always go off at a tangent. It's interesting because Taurus with Aries and a bit of Gemini are all in the 11th house, if you look at the chart, and they're all bunched up there in the upper hemisphere. That's mean, that means when the moon is full, it's actually visible to us. And it is in fact, and I have a map of the world here, which I can't actually put on the video, but the, the, the lunar eclipse is actually going to be uh, visible in its basic totality, which is known as a maximum kind of penumbral eclipse over most of Europe, Africa, parts of Western Australia, the Far East, and Greenland and Alaska. 
it catches the tip of the east coast of South America and a little bit of the east coast of North America and then the kind of central part of South America and then a little bit moving in onto North America, they get an only partial eclipse visibility. So it's, it's quite interesting to watch and it does go on for quite a long time. So, but back to the astrology, because it is quite important. I think because, because it's an eclipse, we have to remember that full moons as well are about bringing something to resolution, to completion, to closure. Now, this full moon, of course, is being partially hidden. What does that mean? The moon is in Taurus. Taurus is about value. It's about uh, stability. It's about our kind of material possessions. It can be about how we earn our money. And Taurus, with this five degree moon point, the moon is conjunct transiting retrograde Jupiter at 11 degrees. Now, Jupiter is expanding the impact of what needs to close, end, come to resolution in your life. Opposite, conjunct the sun in Scorpio. And remember, Scorpio is an interesting sign because Scorpio is about secrets. It's about the underworld. Remember, it's ruled by Pluto, which is a planet about transformation. It's a planet about power. And it's also known as Hades, who opens the gateway to hell. And we've seen plenty of that, sadly, in the last few weeks. It's interesting how the news only has time, it seems, to focus on certain parts of the world that are in turmoil. And if you notice today, I'm actually wearing colors that represent the Ukrainian flag. And that's because Ukraine has got a little bit forgotten and a little bit lost. This is in no way to take away the um, awfulness, the, the terrible atrocities that have been carried out in Israel, Gaza, Palestine. In no way am I, um, you know, putting that in the shadows. It's just that we do need to also remember that Russia might just creep in through the back door. Is that what this full moon is about? The full moon, I believe, and just let me check, is actually, um, I'm looking at Vladimir Zelensky, actually, because it's, that's right, this full moon is squaring his sun, natal sun, and his natal sun is in Aquarius. So it's squaring his natal sun conjunct his Venus. Something's going to knock him off course. Something is going to, uh, I think, shock him. But I also think what he finds through that, because I feel Jupiter is bringing in some protection is that it will bring him an opportunity to somehow use some of that Scorpio energy in opposition, mostly through Mercury, our planet of communication, 
Mars, our planet of war, assertion, aggression, that are conjunct and in opposition to Jupiter, our planet of luck, opportun um, opportunity, expansion, but also spirituality and spiritual kind of awareness and expansion. And they are opposite and conjunct the full moon lunar eclipse. So this eclipse, I did check Putin's chart. It doesn't particularly make that much kind of aspect from what I could make out, but I'll just double check. So what do we have? We have uh, mm, really, his, I think the thing he has to worry about most is that Saturn, transiting Saturn, which of course is back to its zero degree of Pisces at the moment, is actually squaring his moon. And so there are lessons for him to learn. If he's not listening to his gut, to his intuition, it will trip him up. And Pluto trining his moon could push him towards making kind of um, mistakes based on his uh, ego getting inflated. And I think, you know, that Jupiter conjunct this full moon and opposite the sun is doing that. So Jupiter is in opposition to his Venus. I think it's kind of inflating his ego. So he may be thinking, because I know today when I'm recording this, the 17th of October, he's nipped off to Japan, uh, sorry, not Japan, apologies, Japan. He's nipped off to China today and they are having a tete-a-tete with a few other world leaders. So it's just quite interesting what's going on behind the scenes. So yes, I know there are the most appalling atrocities going on in Israel and Gaza. And my God, do I pray for all the souls that are involved in it. And actually, that's all of us, because we're all involved. None of us cannot be affected or somehow drawn in to what is happening in Israel. So, um, you know, I just want to send prayers and love as always, and of course, when we have the full moon Taurus lunar eclipse, I don't know what will be happening. Will it bring some kind of um, change? Let's, let's put it that way, because there could be some secrets that come to light because you do have Mercury in Scorpio conjunct Mars in opposition mostly to Jupiter. So secrets coming out that uh, change a bit of the game plan. Now, I don't know what that means. Seriously, I don't. But there could be changes that we cannot possibly know at this time. What else is going on in this chart? Because Uranus, that is retrograde in Taurus, is also kind of bringing in its energy of shocks, the unexpected. You know, we've had two major earthquakes in Afghanistan that just kind of happened and went past and none of us took much notice, or at least some of us did, but the news didn't present it to us. You know, we're not all rushing out to sort of, you know, refugee centers to donate to Afghanistan, or at least if we are, it's not being publicized. So Uranus at the moment that brings about these massive earth movements that we have. And remember, Uranus is gonna be in Taurus for two or three more years. 
so we could still see more quite devastating earthquakes. That is quite a possibility whilst Uranus stays in Taurus. But Uranus at this full moon lunar eclipse is trining Pluto in Capricorn. Now, that is quite helpful. And we're going to have this trine from Pluto to Uranus for quite a long time. I just need a sip of water. There we go. By the way, I am doing each of your individual zodiac signs so that you know where this is falling in your own personal chart. And they will be time stamped by the lovely Jerry in the description box underneath the video. Some of you do your own time stamping. Um, I'm sorry if ours don't match up or if you're just trying to be helpful. Whichever way, thank you. And so you'll be able to, you know, if you listen to your rising sign, if you know it, and remember, you can always ask me to just quickly check your chart out if you know your time of birth, and I can let you know what your rising sign is. And because that will give you the house denomination and also listen to your sun sign because it will give you a richer sense of what's going to be happening for you with this full moon energy. But Uranus is trining Pluto. And as I said, this is going to be going on for some time. So we have to think of the energies involved. This is a full moon lunar eclipse bringing conclusion, resolution, ending. But not just yet, because the Earth is getting in the way. It's eclipsing the moon. It's preventing the light from the sun, shining fully on the moon to give us a bright full moon. Symbolically, if we have the earth in the way, we have to look at the fact that we're on earth. We live on planet earth. How much do you get in your own way? Or are you getting in your own way with a lot of things currently? We have to constantly check in with ourselves to make sure we're not actually um, masters of our own kind of debacles. I don't want to say downfalls, but you know, we often bring about the things in our lives we don't really want to happen. So Uranus brings in the unexpected and Pluto brings transformation and change. And it is a trine, so that is helpful. And we also have a trine from Uranus, again in Taurus, to Venus in Virgo. Remember, Venus is our planet of relationship, love, it's our planet of self-worth. It's our planet of money and economy. And this could mean with this trine that where things have been a little bit unsettled, maybe with the financial markets or with the price of oil, because perhaps we will see some kind of movement towards um, dialogue in the Middle East. So maybe we will see things just settling a bit because Mercury is there in Scorpio in opposition to this full moon. So the invitation is there from the full moon. Let's talk, but we have to get something out the way first. So we also have um, Saturn that is, is still retrograde in Pisces. It's back to its zero degree. Now Saturn goes direct on November the 4th. And it stays at this zero degree for a little while. So it's kind of already, as we call in astrology, stationing. <laughs> I love it. 
I love all this technology or technical words that we use, but you'll learn them, you'll get used to them. I'm still getting used to them. I've been doing it for 30 years, so there we go. So Saturn trining is trining actually the sun in Scorpio. So what that means is it's actually making a sort of sextile to the moon and Jupiter. So Saturn is actually saying, slow down. Because if we slow down and communicate, we can find the resolutions to bring about the solutions and the endings that we need. Before I go on to your individual signs, I just want to ask you to think about a few things. What do you need in your life um, to, that is actually past its sell-by date? What may you be getting in the way of allowing the cosmos to give you? Is it personal validation? You know, Taurus is about value. Is it that you keep trying so hard to, I don't know, gain people's attention, um, to gain people's admiration, to gain their um, kind of, that, that, that they admire what you do, that they, their permission even. Why is a question you can ask yourself. Can you not give yourself that own validation? Because sometimes that is something we all find quite hard to do. That to not look to others or what we constantly strive to achieve to give us that validation. That's something about this Taurus full moon. And remember, Scorpio is about sometimes what we keep hidden even from ourselves. Do you need to do a little bit of internal reflection to really kind of work out, to look at what you are hiding from yourself? what you can't see yet that perhaps holds you back. And this just brings me back to Saturn because Saturn, you know, is trining the sun. Saturn always brings a gift after we've learnt the lessons that Saturn is trying to give us. So Saturn will always bring some kind of um, validation. Um, tell you, you've done, you know, well done. You've done this well. You will have the realization that you've achieved something, that you've understood something that has been kept, or you have allowed to stay hidden in your unconscious that needs to really come to the surface. Saturn will soon move forward. So Saturn will be giving you the opportunity through this trine to the sun and the sextile to the full moon to uncover something different that you've not yet looked at. I wonder whether you've been looking in the wrong places, reflecting on the wrong, say, parts of your life, missing something that is so screamingly obvious that maybe your body has been trying to tell you. So I just throw those things into our pot as a way to lead into looking at 
um, your individual zodiac signs. And just one more thing before I do that is on the 29th, the day after the full moon lunar eclipse, Mercury and Mars will be exactly conjunct in Scorpio. I think we're going to see tough, angry talk. You might experience that in your own life, in your relationships, at work. It may be you that blows your top. There may be this feeling of build up from the energy from the full moon. That, you know, it, it reminds me of the Taurian energy that I know I have within me as a Taurus. The bull can only be pushed so far. And when it blows, you do not want to be in the way of a charging bull. Are you the charging bull? Is there something you need to be the charging bull about? Have you let people take liberties with your boundaries? These are all things you could think about with this particular full moon. And now finally, I will go, Jerry, the wonderful chart will mysteriously disappear into the ether. And we will start with Aries. Aries, for you, this is about your financial situation. Are you, have you got your eyes open about what needs to be open about what you're doing or how you are making your money? Are you making the most of what you could be doing with your financial situation? And that Jupiter is actually giving you some protection so that if Uranus in Taurus brings in something unexpected that is like, woo, didn't see that coming financially wise, then Jupiter, I think, will bring the unexpected bonus or bountiful amounts of lovely money to help you solve the problem. But you've got to remember to look at what's going on in your eighth house. Do you need to have some tough talk with someone else where you are in a situation of joint finance? Because this full moon could see you reaching the end of your particular tether and you being the proverbial bull in the china shop. And I mean, Aries, you are a ram. You do have horns. So, you know, I wouldn't mess with you as I wouldn't mess with a bull. So <laughs> on that note, let's move on to Taurus. Taurus for you, Taurus, of course, it's in your sign. And you've been rock and rolling with this extraordinary energy for the last few months and few years, because with Uranus in your sign, it's been turning your insides out you upside down, you will have, if you haven't changed, why not? Then you are, you are fixed stubbornly to a certain way of being and pattern. And you need to look at whether that is making you blow or whether you are going to blow an internal fuse. It's not good for your health, Taurus. So don't allow your stubbornness, your fixed way of doing things to get in the way of those that care about you. Because remember the sun is in your opposite sign, Scorpio. And the sun conjunct Mercury and Mars is saying, yeah, I am going to have some tough talk with you because Taurus, I want to wake you up to that things can be better 
that we can sort out our differences if it's a relationship situation. And this could be a relationship situation with a one and only, it could be with a family member, a business colleague, a child. Relationships are relationships. All relationships, as far as I'm concerned, can be seen to come under the energy of the seventh house, as well as the fifth house. So if there are things that need to be discussed, if you need to do a little bit of internal navel gazing, Taurus, then I really strongly suggest that that's what you do. And that way you could use this wonderful full moon energy to let go of something that could really have been holding you back, that you've even forgotten how that's been happening. So sometimes even bulls need a bit of a kick up the bottom. So this is your kick up the bottom, Taurus. Bless you. Let's move on to Gemini. Gemini, for you, of course, is in your 12th house. Now, by now, I'm sure you know what the 12th house is if you watch my videos regularly, because the 12th house is about the inner you. Oh, Gemini, I know you want to talk about it. You want to get everything out there and chatter away and discuss and think and ruminate. What have you been ruminating about? What are you overthinking? And what do you need to change in the way that you have been behaving or managing your day-to-day -day routine? Because remember the sun is in your sixth house of daily routine and health. What do you need to let go of? Do you need to have a good talk with someone? Do you need to talk to a trusted friend to make sense of some situations in your life? Or a trusted counselor or therapist? But this is good energy to do that. Because the thing is, Jupiter, in this part of your chart, conjunct the moon, is offering you its kind of energetic protection. It's saying, I know it's tough, I know it's difficult, I know it's hard to sometimes perhaps say, I'm sorry, maybe I was wrong, I got that wrong. But you know what? The other person will love you so much more for admitting that. So just bear that in mind, Gemini. Now let's move on to Cancer. Cancer, my lovely shell with an inner soft spot that you keep well hidden. You know, it's interesting, Cancer, because of course, Scorpio is in your fifth house. And your fifth house is very much about creativity. It's about children. And I wonder, Cancer, if this is about a conversation you need to have if you have children with one of your loved ones. Because there's something you're hoping to change. There's something, Cancer, that maybe you've been holding back on talking about or unveiling. You know, I'm feeling a little bit of Neptune creeping in here because Neptune is, is kind of in opposition to Venus in Virgo. So I'm feeling that there's something you want to unveil. You have an idea, a project. I don't know, um, uh, you've, you, 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 want, you want to take them all on a holiday or do something exciting. But there's something here about working something out too, 
cancer. And that if you do that, you, uh, yeah, my cat's agreeing with me. I have bought them just to interrupt this new triangular kind of toy thing. It, you might have seen them. They're kind of like cardboard things that they can scratch. You pop catnip in and there are two table tennis balls kind of stuck on a loop that goes around. It's driving them mad because they can't get the balls out. Well, of course they can't get the balls out. They're not supposed to get them out. So how does this fit in with your reading, Cancer? Hmm. What fun things are you hoping to unveil to people that are in your close friend circle and also in your wider friend circle? It feels a little bit as if you've kept yourself hidden and that actually this full moon is inviting you to come outside and you know that you've been inside too long so to speak you need to come out and see a few people how does that sound let's move on to leo leo my lovely lion mm. what do you have to roar about in the 10th house of of course your career your challenges in life your your soul path your public persona. It's where you want to be seen on the, the public kind of world stage. Leo, I feel this full moon for you is in some ways about you having quite a breakthrough, quite an aha moment about what you want to do and where you're going next with your career. I also wonder if some of you will be thinking about moving location because with the sun in Scorpio in your fourth house, Mercury and Mars conjunct in opposition to this full moon, I think you've got some ideas about changing location or certainly making some changes within your home if moving or Changing where you live is, is, is not a possibility. I also think that you, Leo, need to include your family members more in what you're doing and thinking. I think you've been a little bit, Leo, self-absorbed. And you've been so super busy, rushing around, following your dream, and making some of your dreams come true. You know, I'm not taking that away from you, but this is about who might be feeling they're just kind of overshadowed by you going for your la la validation moment. And sometimes Leo, you need to step back down off that platform and just settle and not kind of, um, and actually remember, this is what I wanna say. You have to learn through this full moon to value yourself and trust it and not look for it from others to validate it. Virgo. So Virgo, it's in your ninth house. Now this is the part of your chart to do with higher education. Got Jupiter here. Jupiter can also be about, you know, learning and teaching and spiritual ideas. It's like your, it's like your spiritual side is really opening up. And it feels as if where you've been caught in a little bit of too much grounded earthiness. This full moon energy is helping you just shift your vibration out of looking down all the time at, I don't know, metaphorically columns and lines and words and numbers 
and working out things and caring for people and trying to be there for everyone. And this feels like this is a full moon about you. This is a full moon for you to communicate with those in your close community, yes. I'm not saying don't, but it's also asking you to have that communication with the self, very much with the self. Because I think you, Virgo, are very good sometimes at dishing out the um, advice, the help, and I'm absolutely by no means saying that's not received well or understood or correct, but I think sometimes you don't allow yourself to receive some of that back. Where do you allow yourself to receive care, help, and love? That's what I think this full moon message is for you, Virgo. Let's move on to Libra. So Libra, this is in your eighth house. So this, of course, brings in the energy of your second house of finance, self-worth. And because the full moon is in the, the house that also represents um, joint finance and also transformation, but it's also the house it's the, this sounds very dramatic because it's the house of death, but also of birth. What do you need to let go of, Libra? What have you perhaps been holding on to? Perhaps a habit or a behavior? Uh, a way of doing maybe your organizing your financial situation with someone you have joint joint financial responsibilities with and that maybe you have to look at that and make some changes maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking i think that's a very important thing that you need to do so libra think about also what you need to get out of the way of with yourself Sometimes you are too hard a taskmaster to yourself. You see, the thing is, you are a cardinal sign and you have very strong and um, determined ideas and views about how you want to live your life. And I have no problem with that. I am not in any way saying that that is not helpful. It's good to know what you're doing and where you're going. But Libra, sometimes you have to let go a bit. Let go, kick back, relax, have some fun. This full moon is asking you to let go and actually let God, as I've said to some of the signs before, LG, LG, Talk to me by my lovely friend and a spiritual mentor, Caroline Basie. She said, LG, LG, let go, let God. Okay, now we move on to Scorpio. And of course, Scorpio, for you, this is in your seventh house of significant relationships. So you have this axis, you've got the sun in your sign at the moment. So happy birthday, Scorpio. And you've also got a lot of energy and a lot of activity going on in your first house. And you have Mercury here, you have Mars here. They are all conjunct the sun. If you happen to have a birthday on the 28th of October, then this could be a year that sees a lot of big changes. And it could see you having to let go of something you did not think would leave your life. This could be in the form of a relationship or a good friendship. So there is something you need to look at here. 
in terms of your relationships. It's very much based around your relationships, this particular full moon. Are you getting in the way of a relationship becoming and being what it's meant to be? Are you Scorpio trying to be too dominant? Because sometimes Scorpio, it's kind of like my way or the highway. And Scorpio, sometimes you need to just calm down and respect the views of the other. I'm not saying you don't, so don't hear this wrong, but sometimes Scorpio, you're not always your own best friend. So bear that in mind with this energy because this full moon will bring changes to your relationships. And it could be also that you've been holding on to something that you need to let go of in terms of a relationship. That seems to be what is, is coming up for me with you. Let's move on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, it's in your sixth house. So this is bringing in your day-to-day -day routine. It's bringing in your health. So let's just look at this for a minute because that means you've got Uranus, Jupiter, and the moon all in your sixth house of health and daily routine. But let's look at health. What Sagittarius is flaring up at the moment or could flare up over the next two or three weeks if you don't slow down? Are you rushing to get everything done and completed by some sort of deadline? Are you squeezing more things into your daily routine and running yourself ragged? Are you emotionally feeling really wrung out because, you know, that Scorpio energy in your 12th house is like it's, you're stinging yourself in the tail, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, you're a centaur. You are one of these cosmic bodies that is just so innovative and aware. You are one of the chief centaurs and you are half horse, half human. So which half are you honoring at the moment? Which half do you need to honor at the moment? Just think about it, Sagittarius. Now let's move on to Capricorn. So Capricorn, this of course is in your fifth house. And as you know, I always say, welcome to the house of fun because this is the house of fun. It's your house of fun. And I think you've been having lots of fun. And for Capricorn, it's been really quite a roller coaster of unusual and unexpected events coming along to kind of fill up your calendar pretty quickly. But this is a full moon and I want you to look at whether you are tiring yourself out. Do you need time out from you and what you're doing? Do you need time to kind of assimilate, absorb, process what might be coming into a kind of overwhelm position for you, Capricorn. Because this Scorpio energy in your 10th house of career is, is like, you know, your career, what you do in your career, in your job, if you have one, 
If you're retired, whatever it is that you are passionate about, you might be passionate about saving or getting kind of um, supplies together to send off to the various parts of the, the, the earth at the moment that are in turmoil, that are running out of the, the everyday kind of things that we take for granted. You know, the everyday things that we are so blessed. You know, I'm blessed enough as I'm making this video that I've got a fridge with things in it. I've got a bathroom, I've got electricity. So Capricorn, is there some way that you feel that you actually need to move into your sixth house of service with this full moon in Taurus? You know, it may be that you've been struggling and you've had quite a hard time for a long time and that suddenly you reached a kind of plateau. So Capricorn, if that's where you are for this full moon, why don't you sit back and enjoy it? And then you can climb up the next mountain. There'll always be another one. Now let's move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, it's in your fourth house of home and family, also ancestry. So maybe there is a feel for you at the moment, Aquarius, that feels as if you're not quite settled. You're not quite, you're not okay here. You're not okay there. You don't seem to be okay anywhere. Aquarius, your body is your home. Your soul and psyche are your home. You need to be using the inner home and knowing that wherever you're laying your head is home because you're with you. Aquarius, you are a sign that, that can connect with these higher vibrational energies. So it, it's so important, Aquarius, that you also stay grounded. I think that's why Taurus, um, you know, it, why we're having this full moon in Taurus. Because basically, Taurus in your fourth house is trying to say to you, earth, fixed, home. But bring yourself together and marry it, integrate with it. Blend in with your home in the terms of let your energy be part of where you lay your head. There seems to be a separation, a bit of a dichotomy between what or where is your home. Aquarius, your home is always in you, always. And what you have to do, Aquarius, at this time, because the energies that you've got in the fourth house are pretty kind of earth shattering. So you might have seen big changes in the family which has thrown you off balance a bit. So what I want to say is just roll with it. Don't get spooked out by it because Jupiter is here. Jupiter is bringing the blessings. It's, it's in Taurus, so it's grounding you, but it's also elevating your energies up to that level, that frequency where you feel quite at home. So don't forget that Aquarius. And now finally, we move on to my oceans of emotions. You know who it's going to be. It's going to be Pisces. My darling, oceans of emotions. How are you, Pisces? Whoa, because you've got Saturn going direct soon. Things are going to speed up. 
you're going to be put kind of on high alert with that Saturn energy building in your sign. Get ready for it. It's at zero degrees of your sign. So be ready for that. And remember, Saturn is actually trining the sun in Scorpio and sextiling the full moon. So this is bringing in the energy of Saturn and saying, this is a full moon for you in your house of communication that is very much about you taking a step back, looking at whom in your kind of closer circle you've perhaps been neglecting a bit, overlooking a bit, You've been super busy, Pisces. So much has been going on for you. Where do you need to get out of your own way and actually stop focusing on the emotional stuff that's going on within and your own psyche and soul and personality? And you need to ground yourself a bit, Pisces in good fixed Taurus energy, which this full moon is offering you. It's protected and blessed by Jupiter, raising your frequency to a level where you can see how you can get out of your own way and breathe, Pisces. You know, fish need oxygen. You have been in some ways being suffocated by everything that's been happening for you. Allow that pause in events with this full moon to breathe, to start seeing the bigger picture. As it would be really good for you Pisces to actually sit and view the whole time it's up there, this full moon partial lunar eclipse and sit and just see what you feel. Allow yourself, allow your mind to open up, to sense what's coming in intuitively, what this full moon is trying to gift to you, Pisces. So on that note, I'm gonna bring this to a close. And we are nearly at the end. And I have to quickly say, because I know nobody's attention span goes beyond 60 minutes. So please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Please remember to check out my website, pennydicks.com and the download and purchase the beginner's guide to how to read your natal chart. You can find out what your rising sign is by sending all your details to me via the website and I will just quickly cast your chart. Takes me about four minutes and it's free. And also remember we have a lovely moon chart, a moon calendar for 2024. So have a look at that and purchase that from my website. So I wanna wish you a blessed full moon do get out there and see if you can see it. It looks like it's going to be visible to most of us. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome. And just sit with the energies and feel it. I will be doing a live stream just to talk about how the energy feels in the moment on my channel on the 28th. But I'll be doing it at about 18.30 Central European time. So that's about 12.30 Eastern European time. Uh, sorry, Eastern um, New York time. Uh, in, in GMT time, it's 5.30. And on the West Coast, it's like 9.30 in the morning. So that'll be a live stream. On that note, thank you so much for joining me. You are all absolutely awesome. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Bye for now.